Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and today we're gonna be discussing one of the new exciting features within .NET 8, which is AOT, which stands for ahead of time compilation for our web APIs. We're gonna be seeing what is AOT, how does it differ from normal JIT compilation, which we currently have, and we're gonna be seeing how we can actually utilize it within our minimal APIs. We're gonna be going through step by step, understanding when we should be using both and how they can actually benefit us. As well, at the end, we're gonna be seeing how we can actually create a native AOT minimal API. So let's get started. So we're gonna be going through step by step of how we can actually understand how JIT works and then how AOT works, and we're gonna be seeing the difference between them. So let's say we have created a nice minimal API and this minimal API compromises of our C-sharp code. Now this code needs to run on different operating systems. So it might need to run on Windows, it might need to run on Linux, it might need to run on Max. So there's different operating system that we need to take into consideration. And every single one of these operating system have different processors. So some of them will might be running on an x86 architecture. Some of them might be running on an ARM architecture. Some of them might, might be running on an x64 architecture. And with that, we have different manufacturers of the CPU type. So we have, might have ARMs, we might have Intel, and we might have Snapdragon, we might have Apple Silicon. So we have all of these different variables and we might have the, all of these different configuration that we need to take into consideration. So whenever we're writing our C-sharp code in, and we want to deploy it, so in the current JIT, JIT implementation, what do we do? We publish our code. Once we publish our code, we create DLLs. And those DLLs are going to be in a something called Common Intermediate Language or CIL. And the main benefit of having a CIL DLLs is basically going to allow us to actually modify the DLLs that we have generated based on the operating system and the hardware architecture that we currently have. So for example, once we have uh, the published our DLLs and they are in this uh, CIL form, once we want to decide to run it, if it's going to be, for example, on an Intel, on our AMD, or on M1 or M2, uh, M2 chips, and then we basically, let's say we have decided that we want to go on the Intel route, and once we go on the Intel route, we decided that we want to go on an x86 route. Once we have done, well, once we have decided on what type of architecture we want to run on, then a final transformation of code happen, which is this is where just in time compilation means it will take the CIL DLLs that we currently have, it will convert it into the latest version or basically the compatible version with the operating system, with the architecture, with the CPU into this final types of DLLs where it's going to be running on that host machine. And here we can see where JIT comes into place because JIT compilation it means just in time compilation in order for it to actually match whatever machine you are installed it on and this can take a lot of benefits because basically we don't really have to create a code which is optimized for every single one of these machines so we can see here within this form we have one two three four five six seven different flavors of cpus configuration and this is very minimalistic here we didn't take operating system into place in order for us to share our code so jet took all of this information, it did the compilation and it generated this for us. And basically, once we actually converted from CIL to the final version of the code, let's say we want to take this published file and we want to publish it to another server, which is running on an AMD, for example, uh, CPU, and when we want to run it on x64, we can actually take the same published file and we can directly run it there because the JET compilation will be automatically able to detect that we're now running on a different uh, CPU architecture and different CPU manufacturer and will automatically adjust, uh, adjust the output for it. So we can see here with a JIT compiler, which means a just-in-time compilation, it means that our code will automatically be compiled no matter what types of CPU we're running on, and it will actually provide us with the output running directly there, which is perfect. And basically, this has been .NET has been running for the last 15 to 20 years, but this does not come without its problem. So what is the problems and how and why do we want to think about something else? The main, Some of the main problems that we might be facing with it is slow startup times, because basically Basically, whenever our application wants to run on that operating system, that, let's say on, on a Windows running on an Intel x64, it need, the code or just-in-time compilation will need to actually compile the code to that operating system. And this will lead into a slow startup time. So the application, rather than taking a few milliseconds to, uh, to launch, it might take a second, it might take a second and a half. It all depends on how, how do we architect the application, how the code is running. No matter what 
how fast your machine is. If the code is bad, it will take a long time to to start up. But uh, in, a, in the best way possible, basically, if we have written our code in a much more optimized way, it will still take a long time to, to, to start up because basically the JIT compiler will need to actually identify the CPU, the operating system, do the necessary requirement, uh, do the optimization of the code for that machine, and then convert it into that language, and then it will start. So that's one where that's why we have slow startup times. On the other side, we have a benefit that we can optimize based on the machine and the JIT compiler can actually take into consideration that. Another item is uh, we do, we're not affected by any OS update. So let's say, for example, we updated our Windows machine. We're not really going to be affected by it or basically any of the configuration of the operating system changed as long as we have the SDK installed. We're not going to be affected by it. So that's going to be really, really good. And uh, another item that we really need to think about other than the slow startup time is the amount of memory allocation that we're going to be needing because basically we're going to be compiling the code on the the go on the run it's going to require a lot of resources for the machine it's going to take a lot of cpu powers in order for us to do that it's going to take a lot of machine resources so our application will not be as lightweight as we'd like it to be and it could it might lead to some performance hit it might lead to performance when it comes to scalability so we can see here that this can increase the problem when as the more our application scale up another problem that we might face with that as well is going to be the optimization for each machine so for example for example we know that that if we want to run our code on Windows, we need to make sure that it's configured within Windows. We need to make sure that all of the libraries are Windows compatible. If we want to run it on uh, Linux, it's a completely different story. We need to make sure that we are Debian compatible, etc., etc. So this compatibility into place, we need to make sure that currently within our code is not going to be taken care of. So we need, we're, we're relying on a JIT compiler to do that for us. And this really can also lead to performance hit because we're not really optimizing our code to that information itself of the operating system. We're basically making it general as possible and by making the code as general as possible we're going to be leading to into a lot of performance sets so this is going to be the main item when it comes to JIT compilation we can see this is going to be the flow of our application so once we create our C sharp code we compile it into the CIL which is the common intermediate language once we publish it into a common intermediate language and we want to execute so we can say here on execution it will automatically convert into the final version of it depending on what types of operating system and depending on the architecture that we are currently running and this is just, just uh, this is work fine because i think all of the dot not recent dot not framework or even from before that they have this in place so it has been working but we can see now we are hitting some kind of a limitation on it before we jump into aot let's discuss some of the different types that we have when it comes to jit compilation so it's something we have something called the pre-jit compilation and the pre-jit compilation what it does it actually uh, start to convert or translate from the cil language into the full machine language before we actually run and this can be good and bad because basically this can have some kind of a limitation on what type of operating system we want to run but it will also say time when it comes to actually do the conversion on the last version of our before our application runs and the normal JIT compilation is when, the, when what we normally have it will it's going to be only built within the common intermediate language and then it will go to the final translation when it runs so this is a normal one and then we have the uh, econo JIT compilation the Econo is basically a compilation where it uh, converts our application to have a really, really fast uh, startup time, but it's only suitable for small workload application like we want to host an Azure function or something like that. So this is going to be the different types of uh, JIT compilation that we currently have, and this is going to be the process of a JIT compilation process when it comes to compiling our code. The other way that we can do it is utilizing AOT. And AOT, as we said, stands for ahead of time a compilation. And ahead of time compilation means is before we actually run our application or basically put our application on the server, we have the final machine code that we need to do. So in the previous example inside JIT, uh, the final machine language is actually happening once we wanna run it directly on the machine. And basically what we mean, once we deploy our application on a server, we deploy it in a, a CIL format and then we convert it uh, to the final language machine once we run it on the other hand aot is not the same aot what it does is actually gets the final machine language and then we deploy it and then once we deploy we have the final machine language we don't really have to do any compilation on that machine itself again we have a nice minimal apis we, we write the c-sharp code for it and then once we want to deploy it or basically publish it once we publish it what happens is we up directly the optimization process of a native aot it will optimize the code it will remove the macros the header there for us it will do a lot of the code optimization it then generates the 
uh, CIL language, you will also you're gonna be relying on the CIL language. But once we actually once we are publishing it, what are we doing? We are actually defining on what type of CPU we wanna compile it to and what type of architecture we wanna compile it to. So for example, if we wanna compile it to uh, Intel, we need to define that it's gonna be compilation for Intel, and then we need to define that the compilation as x64, a 64 or x86, uh, similar to AMD and similar to ARM. So if even we wanna compile it to an M1, we need to set it that we are uh, compiling it to a Mac version of an M1 processor of X64. If you want to compile it to a Snapdragon, we can also do that. So we can see here, we are actually defining a lot of stuff of the compilation before we can actually publish our code. On the other hand here, we just put published. And once we have published, we are directly getting the CIL language, which we can actually deploy onto our machine. On the other hand, when it comes to native AOT, what we're doing is we're defining all of these. And once we have defined all of this, once we have defined all of this, we were then getting the published file. Before that, we were not getting the published file only when we have deployed every we defined all of this different configuration then our uh, our uh, code will be like okay now i can actually compile it and then we can get our published folder before that our published folder was only here and then we have to do the rest of the the rest for the of the configuration so here we can see how aot actually differs from a jet by actually we need to tell it that it needs to actually define all of these different configuration order for us to run and the main thing here we need to take into consideration so let's say i compiled my code into an Intel x86 and I want to for example now move my code from an Intel to an AMD x86 I cannot copy paste that code and it will run what I need to do is I need to recompile it in order for it to make it compatible with an AMD and x86 if I now move it to an M1 as well I need to compile it again to ARM as an M1 architecture so it's not as easy to move the code from one place to another because basically every single published file it needs to be fully compatible with the machine that we are actually compiling it what are some of the information that we need to know about AM, about AOT. So we need to basically, before we actually publish, we need to know what type of processor we are compiling to because that's gonna be a crucial item in order for us to actually publish our application. The compilation time is gonna take much more time than JIT compilation because we are doing all of the compilation at the beginning before we can actually publish and we're not relying on any uh, runtime compilation similar to JIT. The output is gonna be larger because we're di directly generating the file as machine languages rather than actually creating it in a CIL format. But what are then gonna be the benefits that we're gonna be facing? The benefits that we're gonna be facing is gonna be fast startup time. So no matter what type of application we have, the startup time is gonna be really fast because it's directly converted into machine language and it will be automatically gonna be uh, running. It's gonna have low overhead because it's already in machine language. So we're gonna be utilizing less CPUs, less RAM, and it's much better suited for actually scaling up our application and because all of this overhead is gonna be much more lower. One of the main downside is we're not going to be have any types of dynamic code generation because it's impossible to have dynamic code generation because if we're using JIT, the dynamic JIT, uh, code generation is going to be happening at runtime because once we're doing the conversion. On the other hand here, because we're actually doing all of the conversion of our code before we can actually start the implementation, what we're doing is we basically eliminating the, the capability of having dynamic code generation, which is something that we really need to think about if we need to have a AOT or a JIT compiler for our code. It all depends on the use cases and the scenarios that we want to take into consideration. Within this, we have already covered the main two differences between AOT and the JIT compilation. So now let's see how we can actually see that in code. So if we want to create directly out of the box a web API, which is AOT enabled, we can see that here within our .NET new, we have a new type which says Web API AOT. And basically within this Web API AOT, we're gonna have a web application directly configured as a web API which has which has AOT enabled in it. So let's create this and I'm gonna open it in Visual Studio Code. So now let's open the application. And basically we can see here that it looks almost the same as a normal minimal web API, but we have something different. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna be creating another normal web API. So not a new web API. API. I'm gonna call it also sample and I'm gonna also open it in Visual Studio Code. Okay, so let's put these next next to each other and let's start the comparison. So on the left hand side, here I have the AOT and here I have the normal one. So first things first that I can actually see, let's make this a bit bigger. We can see here that when I'm creating my builder, I have something called a slim builder enabled. On the other hand, for the normal web API, I have a create builder. And the slim builder here basically it means that this is gonna be a slimmer version of the normal web APIs because basically it there's a 
lot of the stuff which is going to be regarding the code generation and there's a lot of capabilities of our .NET API is going to be removed because the IoT does not support that there's a list of those things that can be removed I'll make sure to add the link in the description down below so you can see them but basically we can see for the normal uh, web IoT we're going to be having the slim builder in place rather than having a create builder which contain all of the functionality other than that if we go a bit down we basically what we're doing is we're configuring a JSON directly uh, enabled into it because basically here what we're doing is we're directly and adding the JSON serialization to it so we're, so it's already configured at uh, when we are actually compiling it rather than having to do that at runtime as well if we go a bit down we can see here that it's also said the same thing as app.run app.run the builder.build is also going to be the same thing. The main differences is going to be on the create slim builder. And if we go to here to the CS proj and let's compare the CS proj of these two files, we're going to be also seeing some changes and some differences. So within the CS proj, we can see that both of them are referring to .NET 8 and both of them have implicit using and the invariant, invariant globalization. But something else that we have in the AOT, which we don't have in a normal JIT compilation is this attribute, which is publish AOT equal to true and the publish aot here means that we want whenever we want to publish this file it's basically it's automatically taking that it's going to be published in aot ahead of time compilation here we're not going to be having that so what we're going to be doing right now is i'm just going to do a publish for both and we're going to be seeing the differences so i'm going to put here dot not publish i'm just going to oh i'm going to decide the output And we can see here once I'm publishing, we can see it's basically generating native code and we can see it automatically defining that my operating system is OS X ARM64. So it defined that it's running on a Mac OS and it's basically ARM64. And basically now it has published everything into an out folder that we currently have. And we can see it took a bit of time to actually do the, the compilation. On the other hand, if I just put dot not publish here, let me make this a bit bigger so it's not hidden behind my screen. I'm gonna put to the output file as well and now we can see the publish is much more faster here on the right hand side and if i basically go let's be clear this up i'm gonna go to the output file i'm gonna type ls and i'm gonna go also to the output file here let's clear it up cd to the output file and let's clear it again i'm gonna put ls and now here we can see that we the output is going to be completely different so the output from the first one it's going to be basically we have the normal dll we have the pdbs we have the configuration and the normal uh, stuff but on the other hand when it comes to publishing as a native aot we're basically we're having a dsym and basically this is going to be the machine language that we're going to be actually running rather than having it in a uh, cil format which is going to be the intermediate language that we're going to be utilizing and here we can see this is going to be the one of the main two differences where we're going to be actually having inside our application now if i run ls dash l what we can see here is we can also see the sizes of the files so we can see here that my file size is quite big if i go on the other hand and run the same file which is we can see here that my file size is much more smaller than the other ones because basically here we are converting it into a machine or to an intermediate language on the other hand here we're actually converting it to the final version of the machine so this is basically has been a quick introduction of aot versus JIT compilation it's up to you and based on the scenario that you currently have on what what technology you want to utilize if you want to utilize aot or you want to utilize jet uh, it's all depending on the scenario the optimization the startup time and all of this there's going to be much more videos in the future regarding uh, aot and how it's actually going to be uh, we can implement cool features with it and how we can actually build on top of this technology if you're interested in this or you have any questions please make sure you put them in the comments down below if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon or buying me a coffee with that said thank you very much for watching and have a great day